All right, I want to show you all a quick demo of how in our system at work, we are able to generate a lot of PDFs in a very short amount of time. This process could be applied to basically anything where you need to do a lot of parallel processing. And you can utilize lambdas on Amazon and an SQS queue to kind of achieve that high throughput uh, parallel processing. So I'm going to show you the demo and then I'm going to walk you through everything I did so that if you guys are curious and learning a little bit more about system architecture and how to build out larger, highly parallel systems, Maybe you guys can learn something from this. So I have my entire application, um, which consists of like two lambdas. And that is deployed to an Amazon URL right here. So if you look at this URL, it some random URL slash generate. And I'm going to pass it a post request with 10,000 names. And what this is going to do is behind the scenes, it's going to generate 10,000 PDFs. And every PDF will have some custom text inside of it for every person's name. Again, this is a really simplistic example, but there are use cases for generating a lot of PDFs based on variable data. These could be user IDs, and for every user ID, you could potentially fetch from a database, generate the PDF, make it customized for that user, and then email that user um, their PDF link when it's done generating, or just give them a, a link and generate on the fly when they click on the link. There's, there's a lot of ways you can do this, right? It depends on your business use cases, but enough talk, let's just demo this. So when I click send, this is going to fire off 10,000 SQS events. Those events get picked up by a Lambda. That Lambda processes 10 at a time. It generates a PDF for each one of them and then saves that to S3. So notice here when I click send, this will take about 16 seconds and it'll return how many names it basically processed. Okay, so this is actually hitting Amazon right now and it's generating 10,000 PDFs. So as we were waiting, like those PDFs are getting kicked off and being generated. And after 16 seconds, we get that initial response back, okay? So let's go over to our bucket here and we can see that we are slowly getting PDFs ingested. In fact, it's already at over a thousand, so we might be um, close to being done already. But I can look at any of these things and just kind of open those PDFs. And you'll see it has a hi, my name is what, my name is who, my name is Arik, Arik, Arik. Pretty cool. So we have custom PDFs for every single user. All right, so before I actually show you like the implementation, I want to show you how fast this was. Using SQS and just sending a bunch of events and parallel processing, processing them with Lambda, um, I was able to achieve 10,000 PDFs uh, within less than a minute. Notice here we have 21, 28, 17. That's when the first event fired off. Uh, ignore this one. This is like from two hours ago. I was playing around. And then if you scroll up to the last event, we have 21, 29, 03. So it didn't even make it to 17 yet. So less than a minute, it was about 50 seconds, it finished all 10,000 PDFs and was able to put them in the S3 bucket like we saw. So I'm going to go to the SQS queue and I'm going to show you, okay, so here we basically ingested a bunch of messages. So, so to give you a little bit more insight, let's go to the past 15 minutes of the SQS queue. And uh, you see here we sent 10,000 events. Those all got processed, pretty cool. And then if you look over at the Lambda, the last 15 minutes of Lambda, you can see here I got 806 invocations followed by, what is this, um, 199. So if you add those together, it's close to 1,000. And remember, we're pro processing like 10 names at a time in every single one of these lambdas. And the average runtime for every lambda that generates 10 PDFs at a time is about a second. Okay, The average is a second. The maximum was about five seconds. Okay, so all these graphs and charts might be a little bit foreign to you, but I'm going to walk you through what we're actually doing. And then I'm going to show you the code of how I achieved this using the SST library. It's super easy to do um, once you get hang of it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to get a user here like so. And what I did is I have an API here and I just sent a request from the user to the API. And that's what you saw with Postman here. I did a send request and I sent over 10,000 names. So just go ahead and send over like 10 names, which is an array of strings. And the API, what that's doing is that is sending off a bunch of events onto an SQS queue. So if I were to find a queue, go ahead and do SQS, that is sending off a bunch of events. So batch send mini PDF, um, PDF generation events. Okay. So far, does that make sense? And I also deployed another Lambda that is basically consuming these events. I'll call this a PDF worker. You can call this a PDF generator. I think I call it a generator. So let's just call it generator and we'll draw an arrow to that. Okay. So this is basically consuming read 10 events at a time. And those events all have the names of the people that we're trying to like generate PDFs for. 
Okay, so this will generate all the PDFs. And then at some point, um, we're going to store a bunch of PDFs. So store PDFs into S3, which is what you're seeing over here. We have like a bunch of PDFs that kind of got created. And that is basically what's going on. So this looks more complicated than it really is. Like if I sh once I show you the code, it's pretty easy. The hardest part was like getting the Lambda to basically generate PDFs using Puppeteer. But I'm going to walk you through all the code and then uh, maybe just anything else I didn't talk about, we can maybe fill in. So how does how do we do this? How do you achieve this using the SST library? OK, so with SST, if you go to like SST.dev, and I will say this is the first time I've used SST as like a standalone thing to just generate some API endpoints and like hook it all together. Um, it's a little bit confusing at first reading through this stuff, but they had some good examples of how to do this with like generating. Um, if you go to examples here, I think they have a way to like do screenshots, Lambda layers, use Chrome. Yeah. So you can read this tutorial. It's a little old. I would say it's a little old and I don't know if it truly works um, because I had to do some different things here to make this work. But they have a good example how you can basically use Lambda to take screenshots of, of URLs and like print those out to S3 buckets. But anyway, let me show you what I did with SST, SST. So I set up an SST project, and that gives you some things out of the box. You get like a package folder, you get some config. But the thing that I kind of focused on converting is my stack TS. So if you look here, um, at the start of the stack, behind the scenes, you're basically just declaring a bunch of different resources, and that's going to spin up cloud formation stacks to kind of define all the stuff that you're running on Amazon, right? Um, if you don't know what CDK is, it's an infrastructure as code tool and SST basically builds on top of CDK to give you um, a lot of additional features really easy out of the box. So how did I achieve this? Well, first of all, I had to create a bucket. So I just said const bucket is equal to new bucket. And going back to this diagram, that'll automatically create this bucket for us. And then I created a queue. Okay, so that's going to create this thing for us. Inside the queue, I said I need to have this queue be consumed by a function. The source code for that function is basically this URL path here, which, which kind of points to this one right here. So if you look at packages, functions, source, generator, if you look in here, there's a main function. Okay, right here, main. So we're telling SST that, hey, load in this JavaScript file or TypeScript file, and you're going to compile that and deploy that out as a Lambda function. But additionally, what you're going to do is we're going to have this as a consumer on the queue. So if you look here, that's basically generating this and this. So from a couple lines of code, we're able to basically hook all this stuff together. And then we're providing a bucket as a binding here, which gives us access to quickly save files into this bucket from inside the code. And I'll show that in a bit. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I have to do is copy some files. Like in order to get the Puppeteer to run on the Lambda, you have to copy over this um, node module Spartacus Chromium bin directory into packages functions bin. It took me a while to figure that out, but that's how I had to do it. OK, so for this part of the process, how does this thing get set up? Over here, we define a new API. This is another SST thing that you can just import. So notice here I have some imports at the top where I import a queue, a bucket, an API. These are just pre-built constructs that allow you to kind of just spin up things really quick. So I'm saying declare a new API and doing some custom timeouts here. I want this thing to last for 29 seconds. And then also I'm binding a queue so that I have access to send events really easily from the code. And then finally, I'm saying we're going to make a post endpoint called slash generate. And that's going to call this function here, which is located at Lambda. And then this has a main function. So Lambda, and then inside of here is the actual like exported function you want to call it, Lambda dot main. This is Lambda. And then inside of that is a file, uh, a, full, a function called main. And then down here, you're just saying print out the URL, which is what you're seeing in my terminal down here, if I were to go up a little bit. So this is the output. This corresponds to this. So that was my like really quick high level overview of SST. You basically define things in TypeScript. And when you deploy this, let me show you how you can deploy this. You basically just run this command. Um, you say SST deploy hyphen hyphen stage prod, and that's going to deploy all of your infrastructure and all your code and hook it all together for you just by running this command. Okay, so it does take some time the first time you do it, but it'll basically recompile your code, deploy it out there, update your lambdas, reconfigure SQ, SQS queues, reconfigure S3 buckets, and all this stuff. And you can further like configure the buckets and configure the queues however you want. Um, just go read the docs. So once that's deployed, this is the endpoint that I hit. 
with that post request. But let's look at the code because I think you guys understand what's going on with like when I did the post request. So when I did a post request to the API here, I said do a post to slash generate and that's going to call this right here. Okay, so let's open up that file. And inside of this, what's going on? Nothing too crazy. Basically, we're just setting up an SQS client so that we can send off those messages. And when we get an event from our API gateway, what we're doing is we're saying get the names from the payload body. This Again, this was like that array of names that had 10,000 names in it. I'm chunking them by 10. And for every chunk, I'm trying to send off um, an SQS send event. And I'm saying send off a batch command of 10 entries at a time. I have to basically give them unique IDs. And then for the message body, I just pass a name. And the cool thing about SQS is remember that bind command we had here, so bind Q. This allows us to import Q from SST slash node slash Q. And then we can just reference that value right here. So like I'm able to get the, the internal reference of where the Q is and just send it in code like this. And then when it's done, we send back how many things were processed. This might be way over your head if you're kind of a beginner, but the key takeaway is all we're doing is we're just hitting an API endpoint. That API endpoint is batch sending a bunch of events to a queue. That's it. Okay, so now let's talk about this one. How does this one work? So if you go back to my stack, remember we have a consumer declared here, which is going to use this function, which is inside of the generator file called main. So the way this one works is it that's up a Puppeteer browser. Um, I have some code basically say if you're running this locally, use this package. If you're running it in Lambda, use this package. But that gives you a Puppeteer instance where you can basically load pages, generate PDFs, take screenshots, etc. Um, we're also importing this S3 client, which we'll use for storing the PDFs into a bucket. But let's let's read how this is working. So we get a browser, and then for those events that come in, we loop over all of them and we do a promise all and just kind of like do 10 at a time. So we're saying generate 10 PDFs at a time and we basically call this generate PDF for name. Okay, so let's go here. What is this doing? This is taking your Puppeteer browser. It's creating a new page. It's setting some HTML content inside of that page. It then exports a PDF from that page. It then closes the page and then it uploads the PDF to S3. So it does that in parallel, 10 at a time. It just basically creates 10 PDFs in parallel, uploads them all in parallel to S3. And then when this entire thing is done, we close the browser and then that's it. So this is basically generating 10, generate 10 PDFs at a time. So that's kind of like the code setup. Again, it's this declaring the stack, setting up some functions, tying them all together and then everything just basically works when you deploy it. So the reason that this is super cool, I really like this, is because you get this like scaling out of the box that's super easy to set up. So the API is a Lambda out of the box and it's gonna scale from zero to a thousand Lambdas concurrently, like super quick. The PDF generator, again, is a Lambda that'll scale from zero to a thousand Lambdas um, with a very short amount of time. So when you send a bunch of SQS events, this thing is able to scale up super fast generate a bunch of PDFs, write them the S3, and then it scales down for you automatically. And this is a really cool approach. I recommend you understanding how to do, especially if you have to do a lot of data processing. So if you ever need to do a bunch of like generation or number crunching, Lambdas with SQS is a really good solution. But again, it all depends on your business use cases. Sometimes having a dedicated machine that is consuming events from SQS might be cheaper it might be faster it all depends but so this took me about an hour to set up so if you can imagine the amount of scaling we get out of the box using amazon like you can't beat this with anything else I, unless you can leave a comment and tell me a better solution to doing this i highly doubt that you can come up with a better solution in the uh, in the less amount of time that's going to process this amount of traffic in pdfs um, that we just saw less than a minute we had ten thousand pdfs generated but maybe I'm just full of it. Maybe there are better solutions out there. But yeah, go check out SST. I really like this library. I'm going to start using it a lot more and probably experimenting with it a lot more. And hopefully if we can incorporate it into my real life work project, because I do find this much easier to deal with than Terraform and some other infrastructure as code tools I've used in the past. So the last thing I want to talk about is cost. I do think that this will cost nothing. Um, you get like a million invocations of Lambda for free every month. Uh, on your Amazon account. And SQS is dirt cheap to send off events. 
S3 is dirt cheap to store items, um, especially if you come back and just like delete them after some time. I should probably empty, empty these out before I forget. But overall, I don't think I'll be charged more than maybe a couple cents for everything I just did, which is another really good selling point of why I like Amazon and why a lot of people like uh, using Amazon, uh, AWS. Well, cool. anyway, I hope that was enjoyable to watch. Uh, have a good day. Happy coding.